I looked at a lot of the players and he was a lot of players with a lot of a lot of ability, but he wasn't really achieving what he should have achieved for the amount of ability in the squad. So likes of Cops, uh, Jimmy O'Connor, Gareth Roberts, um, Brian Stock, James Hay, all some really good players who deserve to be playing at a higher level. And I just think I was the missing link and when I came in and knitted everything together. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have offers from elsewhere then at the time? Was it a, a difficult decision in weighing up? To be honest, I only had one other offer um, at that time. When I was at old, when I was at Blackpool, sorry, I had quite a few clubs. I had Southampton, Crystal Palace, but the chairman there at the time, there was a fifty percent sell on to Man United, so he just would not let me move. So that's why I ended up stay, staying at, um, at Blackpool for so long. Obviously, yeah, you... when I went to Doncaster, I only had one other offer, so and I thought that Doncaster was, was probably the, the best, the best opportunity for me. At that point, had, had Rovers started to get a bit of a reputation for the way they were playing football under Sean O'Driscoll? Was that one of the main attractions? Well, actually, I actually played um, injured at, at Oldham, at Boundary Park, against Doncaster. And I think we won the game, Cops 4-0, I'm not sure. I think it was 4-0. Yeah. But they absolutely battered us in terms of the way that they played, the possession, the, the way they moved. So I could see then it was a good team. But he was obviously lacking something because we were just an average team and we, and we won the game 4 0. But um, I mean, I still think that Cox is one of the best players I've played with. And I've played with some lads that have gone on to be to be absolute superstars, the likes of all the lads at Leicester, Vardy, Harry Kane. Um, all the, the year they won the Premier League, there's probably six, seven lads in that. And I still consider Cox to be one of the best play, players that I've played with. He had a bit of bite, but it wasn't just on, on the field, it was. Um, I think you're right. I think we had a lot of nice individuals, not just players. We had a lot of nice play, like people off the pitch. And when Richie came in, he shook it up a little bit. He was like, he still is ruthless in terms of, um, you know, if, if you're not at it, he'll tell you. Um, he doesn't mix his words. He sort of tells it how it is. And for a lot of people, um, they find it hard to deal with. But for me and for the lads at the time, that's what we needed. You know, Sean wasn't that type of manager that would, would almost uh, give you that rocket if you needed it or tell you um, if you needed to get your finger out. And I think, I think like Richie said there, I know he was sort of tongue-in-cheek, but he was that missing piece um, along with um, sort of what he brought with the ball, you know, he complimented everything that we already had and brought his sort of winning mentality. Win by all costs, I say it. Um, you know, you want him in your team, but you don't because, again, I think me and Greeny spoke about it when, when Richie came over to us and I'd like had a go at us about not passing the ball to him. Um, and he was one of them with the centre-halves as well. So that if you didn't give him the ball, so if Herdy or uh, Millsy or Lockie or one of the lads wasn't giving him the ball, he'd, he'd tell them. Um, and I think that's exactly what we missed and like you say it proved to be the point because we ended up um, when Richard came in getting, getting promoted I think your first two league goals came on the same game didn't they Swansea away yeah. memory serves me right what was that like to get off the mark and, and win the game I think 2-1 victory that day as well well more importantly it saved Sean's job I think now I'm being serious we had a, we had a crisis meeting I don't know if you remember it Cops we had a crisis meeting um in the hotel the day before, where actually John Ryan come in and I think Sean had allowed John to come in and, and speak to the players. He'd invested in the, in the summer quite heavily in the squad and we got off to a, to a pretty bad start. I remember when we played 4-2-4 away at Hartlepool and, and was all over the place. Um, we went 1-0 down to Swansea and I think that was a big, a big turning point, not just in to the result. We knew that Swansea were going to be up there as well. And I remember, me, I think it was... Uh, I think it was a second goal. We all went over to Sean as well and we, we embraced each other. And I think that sometimes in a season, moments like that can, can kind of bring you together. And I think that was definitely a turning point, yeah. After that difficult start, Richie, at what point in that season did you start to feel the momentum swing? Obviously, promotion at the end of it will come on to that. But did you start to feel a shift in the way that things were going? Um, I can't really remember a, a defining moment. The Swansea one was a, obviously a big, a big one, but um, we th the training ground was was excellent because what what Sean would do, he would what, he would put scenario training on. So okay, you're one nil down, 
with 10 minutes to go, what do you need to do? You need to go and force the play. You know, but you don't play long. You keep trying to pick your way through. You keep trying to do the right things. Vice versa, the other teams won the up and down to 10 men. You've got to hang on. You've got to manage the game. And, and a lot, I've took actually a lot of them sessions forward with me because a lot of managers don't actually practice for scenarios what can come up in game. You just put possession drills on or passing drills when tonight to relative to what's going to happen on a Saturday or on a Tuesday. So I think you start to feel it in training, the fact that you look around and, and you think we've actually got a good team here. Um, and then there was, there was times, even more so in a championship than, in, than that season in League One, where people were like, we can't get near you. I'll, I'll never forget Leon Clark. Leon Clark's a good mate of mine. He was at Sheffield Wednesday at the time. It was nil-nil at half-time. He comes out for the second half and he says, Rich, can we not just end this game and you just take the points? And it was nil-nil. He just, he just said, we can't get near you. I'm sick of chasing you around. And that was... That was a lot of games that last year. I remember we played in the League One. Probably the best performance was Millwall away when we yeah. won 4-0. I remember Greeny scored an unbelievable volley. And Millwall, known for its hostility and, and all that kind of... They actually clapped us off at the end. So, we was, we was a really good team. I can't remember the actual day that we think we, we can achieve some here, but, you know, the fundamentals were, were based on a training ground and the training sessions and then we just took them into games. I, I don't think we were allowed to to start thinking about, and I don't think you are, you know, when, when you are enjoying your football and when you are in it, you don't almost have the opportunity to, to look at it like that, I don't think. I just think you, with us especially, we just almost turned up, did our stuff on, at the training ground, and then we started to almost create this reputation of playing. That, I think that's where it began, you know. I look back and I watch the Leeds playoff final and, um, I know we'll get on to it, but we absolutely annihilated Leeds and it probably wasn't our best performance. But at the same time, we sort of, there was moments in that game where you think that they can't get anywhere near us. In terms of the, the Cheltenham defeat on the final game of the season, having got so close to, to automatic promotion, how did you go about picking yourself up individually after that game? Because it was all on that, wasn't it? If we'd have won that game, we'd have gone up automatically to then have to do another few weeks training and prepare yourself for, for the playoffs. What was that like from your point of view? After the game, I was devastated. I was devastated. Uh, Sean put, I, I mean, I was struggling at that time because I needed a, a double earning. So in the first half, I was just, I was struggling to move. And um, I come in at half time and Sean threatened to take me off and he actually said, will you take that caravan off your back? And that <laughs> felt like I was carrying a caravan on my back. Um but the biggest disappointment, me being me, I actually took me going out gear on the coach and hung it up at the back of the coach, ready to win against Cheltenham and go out after it. He said this. So, obviously that happened. You go away, you reflect and you think, you know what? We could have won promotion. I think Swansea and Nottingham Forest. So Swansea won promotion mm. and Nottingham Forest got second and they won away at Brighton to, to clinch second. I think they did anyway. And then celebrating in front of 8,000 or whatever. It, and then I, we actually came in and had a meeting a couple of days after it. And we said, we've got a chance to win promotion at Wembley now. So we, we, we've missed out on that opportunity. And we looked at the teams. I mean, Southend, we was better than them. And then obviously looking at Leeds, which is a big carrier. But um, I was buzzing that Leeds got to the final. Um, a lot of people wanted want Carlisle because he thought he was a weaker opposition. But you know that if Leeds turn up, there's going to be a massive crowd there. So... The meeting after the, the defeat against Cheltenham was big because we realised that we had an open opportunity. With the injury you had, was it a case of resting up and getting yourself as ready as you could be for the final? And or were you just on momentum and, and adrenaline for the final? No, it, was, it was just a case. I couldn't... I don't know if people have had a double Ernie. I mean, the, the morning of the South End away game, I just couldn't get out of bed. And I was rooming with Lewis Guy. And Lewis Guy knew that if I was injured, he'd play. So when I said, Lewis, I can't get up. But he thought I was winding him up. You know what, Lewis is like, you're winding me up, aren't you? He's getting on the, I'm a playing, I'm a playing. I said, get, get ready, Lewis, because you're, you're going to play. And I just couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't move. Um, then the second game, I was, I was all right. Like I say, it was an easy game. So I think I got 65 minutes or something like that. And then for the final, I just had three injections, one on either side of my groin and then one, up, one on my buttock. Um, and I've actually got a video of me walking off to after sorry, walking back out on the pitch at Wembley when I had the injections and I was thinking, this don't feel right, this. But then obviously as it gets, the, the four or five minutes it takes to, to get in your system, it, I was all right until it wore off. 
Richie, in terms of that, the final playoff final, then you mentioned their adaptability and, and balancing performance with the results. But in a final, rarely would you get a, a complete performance from your team. So, what were the team talks like heading into that in terms of having to find a way to win and not necessarily having to pl- play your prettiest football to do that? I think we won the game the day before. We went to, we went to, Sean took us to Wembley to have a look around, so it wasn't a shock on a day. And actually, the Leeds players were on the other side of the, of the pitch. Um, and me being me, I just walked over and got a little bit closer and just looked to, looked to a few of them. And I just, I just, you just know. Um, I spoke to you, I've actually played with Jermaine Beckford after that. And he always said, like, he said, we just knew he was, he was a bit of a bleep. And you always got under our skin, you done this. And he was, the manager was saying that he's injured, get into him and, and this, that, the other. So I, I do believe that we won the game the day before. Um, in terms of the, the day, I can't I actually remember much of it. I can't remember before the game. Obviously, remember having them injections. And um, like Cop said, I didn't play particularly well that day. You just got to try and get through it. Um, obviously, a great header from, from Hates. I thought he defended well. I thought Sully was at the, Sully at his best, coming for things, wasting time at the end. He comes, he catches it, he puts his knees up in case anybody wants to run into his knee. Um, and then he rolls around for five minutes, wasting time. So I thought Sully was very good. In terms of our, I think first half, we were decent. We got some good moves together. We probably should have scored a couple there. Keeper pulled off a, a few good saves. But in terms of being our... At our very best, it's very rare you, you, you're at your best in a final. So we, ju- we just got the job done. The next season then, following on from promotion, how did you feel you stepped up into a champ- into becoming a championship player? How did you find the transition? Well, the first game was good because Derby had just been, been relegated from the, from the Premier League and we've been promoted. We, we win. Um, I remember we won at Coventry at home. Someone scored a world from 30 yards. <laughs> yeah, I was going to bring that up, but you've done it. <laughs> we started really well. But then the, the, the realisation of, of that league, which is very, very tough, of having to do it every Saturday, every Tuesday. I don't think we had the biggest squad. And then in, the, in League One, where we had no number nine, but everyone else was chipping in, I think when you move up that level, you do need that number nine that can that can bang your goals in, and you, and you can rely on him. You know when it's you new, know, and, we, and we had the, every game we had. Don't matter who we played. I remember we played Charlotte at home, and Alan Pardew actually come out. They beat us one nil. Alan Pardew come out and said they're they're an unbelievable team. Um, but if you don't score the goals, which didn't happen up until January, then we we was very very in, inconsistent. It all seemed to change on, on Boxing Day, didn't it? The, the results hadn't been there up to that point. I think we'd won four games before Christmas, but then everything seemed to go right at the City ground against Forest. What would you put that down to? Well, funnily enough, I actually watched that game in full. Um, it definitely wasn't in HD. Someone followed it. <laughs> yeah, um, have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, someone followed it to me on Twitter, so I, I had a couple of hours spare, so I just actually I sat and I watched it. And we, we just strolled through the game. We kept the ball. We moved it well. Um, I think Woody's goal where he chipped the keeper, we, we got 30-odd passes before it. Um, and that was probably the, the light bulb moment of that season to actually give us really belief. Um, because Forrest at that time was a good team. But um, we absolutely battered them on that day. I think from then on, it was only Wolves that got promoted and maybe one other promotion team that got more points than us in the second half of the season. But again, that was a frustration of mine, the fact that if we would have spent money on a Billy Sharp, for example, at the start of the season, we, we don't know where we could have been. What were your thoughts on results and performance level in terms of how Sean O'Driscoll looked at it, that performance was often more important than results? How did you deal with that? I, I t- 100% exactly the same. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of psychologists in the last couple of years um, and you can only influence what you can influence. My last two results at Salford, we played on Saturday, we beat Bradford 3-0. Brilliant performance, could have scored six or seven. You come away from the game, I'm happy, I'm buzzing. We played Morecambe the other night and the performance levels were shocking, shocking. Nowhere near good enough, but we win the game 2-1. But in my mind, it feels like a defeat because... My, one of my best players scores two worldies from outside the box. Now, that ain't going to happen every single week. But our performance levels, what we can control week in, week out, will get us results long term. So, totally agree with Sean. 
if you, a lot of managers, they play a long ball and, and hit channels. If the ball don't bounce for you on that particular day, you're going to lose games. But if you work on stuff and you get your performance levels right, then more often than not, you will win games. And like, again, sort of, that's what I enjoyed about the relationship that me and Richie had was like, it was almost telepathic to the point where I, I imagine we both grew up in the similar sort of way of playing, you know, and, and really enjoyed and knew. And, and I don't think I've ever played, I don't think I've played with anybody the same, you know, since then. John Oster was very similar to Richie. Um, you didn't play with John, did you, Rich? No. Um, I always said that I'd love to have seen Richie and John, um, Stocky, myself in the same team because... Yeah, we grew up probably wanting to play that sort of technical tick attack type of football that I don't see I don't see much of it now, you know. I don't I don't see teams playing the way we used to play. It's, a lot of it's transition, a lot of it's sort of on the front foot. Um there's not many teams still sort of playing that way. Um which is a shame, but like you say, looking back, um watching old footage of games, you, you you know, I, I don't think unless you're unless you're a Doncaster fan, unless you're involved as a player or a manager, I don't think you will understand how good we were. Yeah, if 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 that football was being played at a Championship club like a Derby or one of the you know one of the top top Championship clubs, people would have been putting us on on Sky every week. 